Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us all stand. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we are so glad that uh, we are alive and well. How many are alive and well? Yeah. yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And as people are coming in and as those are joining us online, we want to take this time to go before the Lord in prayer. And if there are any prayer requests here or online, just pray about it. As we pray together, we are going to ask God to intervene on your behalf. He knows what our needs are. Amen? And so we want to go before the presence of the Lord. And uh, today we have an exciting day, and so we don't want to take much time doing much of anything but what our guests will be delivering to us today. So let's go before the Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you and honor you, God, for all you have done. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your kindness. We thank you, God, for keeping us, for always protecting us, providing for us. And Lord, you have kept us through so much over the last few years. And to, today we give you praise, glory, and honor. And God, if there's anyone sick, afflicted here, Lord, online, would you help them? Even those who would be viewing this afterwards, God. We pray for the power of Almighty God to move on their behalf. God, we pray for miracle signs and wonders. We pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We pray, God, that conviction will anoint the hearts and the minds of people and that, God Almighty, your spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. God, would you allow us, dear God, to come before you and to worship you right now, God, from our hearts. Help us to lay aside every weight, every sin, anything that might so easily beset us, God, and come before you, God. God, because there are people who need to hear this gospel. And more than hearing it, God, they need to see our lives, God, exemplifying this great gospel. And we're asking you, Holy Ghost, to help us today. Help us to change. Help us, God, that the atmosphere in this place will cause us, dear God, to fall down on our knees and glorify you as we ought to. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship the Lord today. Let's worship the Lord today. It allows us to fulfill our mission by reaching people through our local and online ministry. Did you know that when you give to New Life, you're not just giving to the local ministry? You are also sharing the love of Jesus with people all over the world. Along with our global partners, we're providing natural and spiritual needs to people in places like South America, Africa, the Caribbean, with your help, we can truly fulfill our mission, changing lives through the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you would like to join us in giving, there are three ways to give. You can text any dollar amount to 84321. Go to our website, mindlifenyc.org. Or you can give in person at the end of the service. Thank, Thank you, you for giving, giving to New Life. life. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. God is good, amen? He's an everlasting God. He reigns from everlasting to everlasting. There's nobody like my Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I am ready to see him. Whenever he comes, I can't wait to see his face. I can't wait to be in his presence. And my confidence is in knowing that one day I will be with him, amen? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait. On you, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is my life, salvation. Shall I fear? Shall I be afraid?
morning. If you believe that this morning, open up your mouth and say, I will trust in you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident, confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord.
He's a mighty king. I trust him. I will wait on him. Hallelujah. I can't wait to see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my hope. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. How many know that God's name is the greatest name under heaven and earth? Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain.
somebody, let's praise him, let's praise him, let's praise him. Why don't you get on your feet right now and just begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call his name, I feel a breaking when I call. When I call his name, come on somebody. The atmosphere begins to shift when I call his name. Whatever is happening where you live, whatever is happening in your courtyard, in your backyard, God is there, always will be there for you. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. You know, over the last month, we've had every single Sunday somebody get the Holy Ghost. On Friday, I got a call from uh, the district secretary of Michigan District uh, this past week and and he said somebody's coming from our church he's a new convert and he said listen um this guy's gonna come out he wants to preach in new york he's a new convert but he he, he has somebody that he wants to be baptized come on now i get a call on friday and he says listen i've got the guy you know can we get him baptized i said meet me here at three o'clock he shows up on time amen we got him in the water Come on now. You see, there's something about the Holy Ghost that will do things when you don't know how lives are being touched and people are being motivated to serve God and, and his mom, amen, that lives right here in New York because he's from Michigan. And he says, I've been teaching her Bible studies and, and I want my mom to get baptized in Jesus' name. And I said, listen, we're going to do this together. We're going to go out there and we're going to reach those that you won't reach right here, your family and your friends. Don't you dare think that you can't do it too. Man, all you got to do is just share this gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the most powerful thing on this earth. This gospel that Jesus shed his blood for is the most powerful thing on this earth. I'm telling you, mighty God, Jesus just gave us a glimpse. He said, listen, if you had faith just the size of a mustard seed, You'd be able to say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. That's powerful. Amen. You need to live in that power. I'm not preaching today. Amen. Yeah, I said you need to li live in that power because there's awesomeness in God. We've had healings around here. People have been delivered. So the Lord says, listen, I want you to live your best life here. Now, it, that, those weren't the words, but he said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly, amen? So to me, that's my best life here. So I'm not willing to accept the negative things. I cast them out in Jesus' name. And I decree and declare that God will bring justice, peace, love, contentment, come on somebody, whatever it is that you need, the Holy Ghost, deliverance, peace, Restoration of broken relationships. I feel the Holy Ghost. But there's a couple that came today, and it's good to see Sister Teets. Anthony's with her as well. Good to see Anthony. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm just glad that she was able to make it. Mother Teets, she was our mother here for many, many years in this church, not just the first lady of the church, but our mother. And uh, she uh, allowed Brother Henry Chaconta, Pastor Henry Chaconta, actually Bishop Henry Chaconta, he doesn't want that, but the work that he's doing is that of an apostle as far as I'm concerned. And I don't say that lightly because God has been using him, motivating him and, and Sister Jennifer, and she is as much a part of what they're going to be sharing as he is and as much as they're working together for the Lord. We, we've been supporting, but we want to do more this year. We want, let me say it again. We want to do more this year. And, and, and I hope they're going to share everything because, like I said last week or week before last as well, that they're picking people up off the streets. It's time for us to stop talking about the gospel and live the gospel. When, 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 when they reached out to me a few years back and they said that they, they had the opportunity to purchase this place and, that, uh, and they shared a vision of all that they were going to be able to do to touch lives, to help people, to help them, put them up, give them a place to stay if they didn't have one. You know, my heart just went out. 
because God showed me, and I didn't know it was them, but God showed me that he was going to bring some people into our lives in this church and that we were supposed to support them. And lo and behold, a phone call came. So we want them to come. They're going to share their hearts. They're not strangers here. And um, I, I hope that they just let their hair down and just do what God wants them to do. Share it. Share everything, the good, the bad, and the oh so ugly, if there's any, because we want to be there with you. Amen? Pastor Choconta and Sister Jennifer Choconta, would you come and give us what God has given to you? Praise God. You may be seated. Well, we are so thankful, and uh, we are so blessed to be here today um, with uh, Pastor Bobby, <laughs> amen, and uh, this is a, it's a blessing, this is a building, these people bring so much memories, wonderful memories, <clears throat> amen, um, and um, I want to honor and, and uh, express how much I respect uh, Pastor Bobby, amen, for what, um, uh, for what he is, you know, and, uh, and for uh, honoring uh, uh, the memory and the work of my father-in-law, Scotty Teets, who is with the Lord today. Amen. And I, I, I honor and I respect that. Amen. I respect you uh, uh, greatly, uh, Pastor Bobby, and you and your uh, precious wife. Amen. And this congregation. And of course, you know, taking care of, uh, uh, in a way, taking care, in a big way, taking care of Sister Teets, you know, after uh, uh, Pastor uh, Teets went to be with the Lord, you know, and, uh, and taking care of her for so many years, so many years. Uh, uh, let me be frank and honest, you know, I heard uh, some other congregations uh, and other pastors that when they take over the church, they kind of uh, put aside, you know, the previous uh, pastor and pastor's wife, uh, but not you, not you, I mean. So I honor you, I respect you for that. And um, I, I can say this in Jesus' name, and he will not uh, allow me to, uh, or my, my words to fail, but you will reap, man, greatly. Immensely. Uh, what you have done for them. Amen. Great to be with, uh, of course, my mother in law and my brother in law, Anthony and Sissy Teets. Great to be with them. Um, and uh, great to be with my, uh, my wonderful, marvelous, uh, beautiful, everlasting <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I say everlasting because uh, I mean, uh, once is, you know, <laughs> and she's not going anywhere. Uh, great to be with her. And yes, Pastor, you said it right. Uh, that she, uh, we are, we are one. We are a team. Everything we do, and I thank God that God gave me this woman, and that uh, the teach did a wonderful job uh, training her on the mission field uh, for our ministry. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, you got to see her in action in, 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 in foreign countries, you know, and in Colombia and Ecuador. She's just right next to me with a machete in her hand, you know, <laughs> opening ways for, for our ministry to, to, to move forward. Amen. So um, it's so... Uh, 
wonderful to, that she's with me. I just came back from Colombia uh, last Thursday, and uh, she came from Ohio. And even though I, uh, even though I was a week, uh, for a week over there in Colombia, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I need her, you know. <laughs> I need her right next to me, eating with me, sleeping with me, you know. Uh, working with me, I need to uh, see her every day, you know, uh, I cannot live with her, amen, God gave me the, the right compliment and, and the right teammate to help to, to, to work for God, to, to do ministry, so before we, um, uh, we go into our presentation, um, uh, I also want to say thank you for your I'm not going to say support, but for your investment, amen, uh, for investing in, in our ministry. And um, what we're going to do uh, before I preach, before I understand, I just have a short message that I want to share with you. But before that, we want to show you the, 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 uh, the results of your investment, amen. I want to give you a, re we want to give you a report. Uh, uh, of your investment. So would you like to say hi? Amen. Before Amen. It's so good to be here. Um, this is my home church, I would say. I've uh, been at this altar many times. Amen. And a lot of you have been my encouragement in those years and even now. Um, I also want to thank uh, Pastor Henry, Sister Blossom, for going on, taking this on. Amen. And I'm taking it on because you're my heroes. Anyone that's pastoring right now, you're my heroes. Amen. And um, we were the ones that called your pastor and asked if we could come visit. And we just wanted to uh, present what we're doing. And he said, no, we want you to come. You, you come and you, we want Brother Henry to preach. So here we are. We thank you for that. Thank you for opening your doors that way. I'm also very happy that my mother's here and my brother, who also have so many memories in this place. Amen. It's hard not to come in here and feel like this is us. This is we <laughs> We've been gone a long time, but we still feel very connected with you. But we love you. So thank you for giving us this opportunity today to express our burden, but to share with you as well, those that of you have invested into this work, Sister Maria, God bless you. We love you so much. Thank you. And just, uh, we, we pray that as we present this, you'll realize that God can use anyone. God can use anyone to do a good work. Amen. And that's what we would like for you to know today. God can use anyone. Amen. To do a good work. Praise God. Well, thank you. Amen. Um, as you can see, our logo, Revive International, that's the name that we gave to our ministry. Uh, and when I say ministry, I'm talking about service, work, labor. So Revive International was formed to fulfill the Great Commission using the methods used by the early church through home Bible studies, home friendship groups, and supplying the needs of people in targeted communities. We have been able to form several church or Christian communities in South America, especially the countries of Colombia and Ecuador. A couple of years ago, I was approached by some brethren who had a great desire to do something for God. I told them that what I could do is teach them how to reach people by teaching them the gospel through home Bible studies and provide uh, fellowship through home friendship groups. One of the challenges was that I was living in the States and they lived in Colombia. So uh, they agree on teaching, uh, me teaching them a home Bible study via Skype. Amen. Nothing is impossible for God. I told them uh, that one of my condition to do this, to teach the Bible study, was uh, that they have to gather 
a few friends or family members that needed to hear the gospel. <laughs> Amen. And invite them to participate uh, in the online Bible study. Amen. We started this uh, online Bible study with three different groups in three different regions of Colombia, all coming online at the same time. Thank God for technology. Amen. <laughs> The results were amazing. Out of one group, amen, we baptized 14 people. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just out of one group. And one of the people that was baptized went on to become the spiritual leader or the pastor of that community of people that have been displaced due to violence in their community. Also, we end up baptizing 25 people from the other community. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And we have baptized close to 40 people from the third community. <laughs> Amen. There is nothing impossible for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We believe that the best way to establish a strong relationship is by giving something first. And that's the way, and that's why we go into impoverished, uh, vulnerable communities, and we give, hand out food baskets, clothing, hygiene items. Of course, we ask them to fill out a contact card mm -hmm. to participate in drawings of other prizes. And we use that information to follow up with them later. And we've seen that people keep coming back to our events, to our services, because those actions of love cause them to open their hearts as well. And then once they open their hearts, we're able to share the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Last year alone, despite of the community, this, despite of uh, uh, the pandemic, we were, we were able to add uh, to the kingdom two more churches in Colombia and one in the country of Ecuador. Amen. I believe this is an unstoppable mission. Amen. And we thank God that since 2019, Revive has started five new churches, uh, Christian communities in Colombia and four in Ecuador. Amen. Now, this is just one side of our ministry. Amen. Another side of our ministry is called Give Life Charities. This is a 501c3. It's a humanitarian effort. Our mission is providing sustainable solutions for communities where people thrive socially, economically, and spiritually. We're currently fully supporting Hope of Life Elderly Shelter in Barcelona, Quindío, Colombia. We were introduced to Diana, who's the director of this home a few years ago, and she was in dire need of financial sponsors. We went to visit the home and learn more about their efforts for the elderly. Uh, they were, at that time, living in a very small house in the town um, with several elders sleeping on the floor of that house. We began to help them and were able to rent them a much larger facility, a farmhouse. There they were able to grow their own vegetables and have chickens and therefore eggs. We recently helped raise money to help them buy a car because they were using public transportation and it was hard to get someone to come pick them up from that farm. Uh, there is no government uh, funding for the elderly in Colombia. And that is why they end up uh, living in such uh, precarious uh, situations, even abandoned uh, by their own families or put out on the streets to beg for their food. Uh, such is the case of Maximiliano. Amen. Uh, you can see him in the picture. Um, Just looking at, the, at his picture, you know, it touches my heart because of, of, of his uh, testimony and his story. 
you know, I just saw him last week. Every time I go to Colombia, I have to go to the shelter and, and, and see them and hug them. But when we found him, and that's how we found him, uh, he was living in a rat and roach infested shack. You know, as you can see in the picture, uh, he, he was blind and he is blind, physically blind and helpless. Uh, Diana, who is one of the directors, was uh, walking by his uh, shock and uh, heard someone crying. Amen. Uh, he approached him and found out that the reason why he was crying was because he had not eaten anything for three days. She brought him into the shelter, bait him, groom him, and now he has the hope of living a better life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. A better life on this earth and in eternity because Brother uh, Pachito, who you see him, Brother Pachito, uh, who is another resident of the shelter, uh, uh, is uh, somehow the, the preacher among them, you know. And, uh, and, and Pachito taught Maximiliano the gospel, and Pachito was, uh, and Maximiliano was baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Every time we visit the shelter, Maximiliano, he always wanted to sing a song that he learned. Pachito taught him the song, and that song is Amazing Grace, in Spanish, of course. <laughs> but what touches me is on that part that says, I was blind, but now I see. And Maximiliano, even though he's blind, but he loves to sing the song, you know. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Praise God. Adilma is another resident at the shelter. The police asked if the shelter could take her in because she was out on the street and they were allowing her to sleep one night at the police precinct, it's a small town, the next night with the fire department, but no one was really taking care of her. She had been abandoned by her family and was just out on the street. No one caring for her basic needs. When she came into the shelter, they noticed that she didn't want to be close to any of the men. And she was very afraid of them. And they had to bring in a counselor to talk to her. And after a while, she let them know that when she was out on the street, this old lady had been raped numerous times. We thank God that she came in to the shelter and she heard about a man who had never hurt her. And she gave her life to Christ at the shelter. She too was baptized. She too now has a new hope of life. Amen. Praise God. Can you praise God for a Amen. moment? Can you thank him? You see, I have learned that with God, the story never ends. Amen. And the best is always yet to come with him. Amen. Amen. And you know, thank God that for these elders, even though they are 80, 85, 92 years old, uh, there is hope. Amen. There is always hope. Amen. Um, every one of them uh, has a touching story to tell, but uh, we don't have the time to tell, to, to tell them all. Uh, to sustain each elder cost us approximately $150 a month. Man. So we are now in search of uh, partners that will adopt one of the elders who are currently uh, re residing uh, at the shelter. We, Amen. Curr we currently have 15 residents. Amen. Amen. We are also currently, current, currently <laughs> presently uh, targeting a community Amen. in the city of Cali, uh, Colombia, uh, with the greatest population and lowest income in that city. We have a pastor in place there who is currently teaching three weekly small group meetings. 
This community consu consists of 126,000 people. Um, 60,000 are women. Amen. 60,000 of them are women. And 19,600 uh, of this woman are single moms. In other words, 49.9% of the families in that community are single moms. Considering the demographics of this community, we are currently in the process of establishing uh, a child care facility to help the working single mothers of this community. By helping these mothers with the care of their children while they work, we hope to also be able to share the gospel with them and teach their children biblical principles. Amen. We are currently in the process of putting uh, the project together. We are, as a matter of fact, last week I was talking to pastor, and that's why I show you the, the, the demographics, amen, because we are putting the project together. We want to do this by the books. Uh, and um, so we are uh, putting that uh, project together with legal uh, experts in Colombia in raising the funds for all the items they need, including uh, leasing or renting a building that will be used uh, uh, on the weekends for worship center, but during the week for the child care. Amen. In May, uh, we, uh, in May, we revive international sponsor a neighborhood uh, child's or uh, children's event. And, um, and so great results with people showing up uh, the next day uh, at the Sunday uh, morning worship service, amen, um, that they are having. It will be a great, it will be great if uh, this church would like to consider sponsoring uh, this specific wonderful uh, project. Amen. Uh, another thing we want to talk to you about is our wonderful Darvida coffee that not only tastes good, but does good. <laughs> um, Darvida means give life, by the way. And we were approached by an association of female coffee farmers from the Coffee Belt region of Colombia some time ago. Um, among them are single mothers, women that were displaced from their homes due to violence um, and put into a small farmland where they had to work the field for sustainment. They found out about our humanitarian efforts and asked if we'd be willing to help them by purchasing their organically grown coffee. And we saw this as an opportunity to help them and help our other humanitarian efforts. So to make a long story short, we now have packaged our coffee uh, with the name Dar Vida, which means give life. And we bring it into the States and we sell it everywhere we go. We sell it online. We're in a couple of retail stores in Ohio. Amen. And 100% of the proceeds go back to Columbia to those humanitarian efforts that we're doing. So after service today, you'll have an opportunity, if you would like, to purchase some coffee. That's uh, the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, uh, even if you don't drink coffee, uh, uh, this coffee will do you good. So after service, we have a table in the back. Please stop by. Even if you don't drink coffee, uh, purchase it uh, and, and give it to somebody that drinks. That way you will support uh, our ministry and support uh, uh, those precious women uh, in, in the coffee belt region of Colombia. Amen. I got like 60 bags over there in the back. And uh, uh, the Lord said, don't take anything back. So, <laughs> amen. Amen. Lastly, uh, 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 we want to let you know about our Revive Center, uh, which uh, sits in two acres of land. Amen. Um, that was uh, donated to us uh, by my father. Amen. And um, when we first uh, saw this property, uh, we had no idea uh, what was on it. And it was very, very uh, neglected. Amen. Uh, what you see is nothing uh, like it was when we bought that property. 
later we discovered the amount of fruit, trees, and a source of spring water on the property. <laughs> Amen. Um, and we have been working for the last three years to improve this property for multiple purposes. And one of those is uh, a training center for pastors, amen, and leaders, but also for community events, amen, such as uh, the, the um, uh, such as the uh, uh, the mental and emotional health seminar that we hosted recently with uh, Dr. Doug and and Mary Carpenter, who are members of another church in uh, in Michigan, in Auburn Hills, Michigan, uh, and uh, so they came and uh, and they. We had this uh, uh, seminar, um, and basically uh, uh, the purpose was to target people uh, and, and eventually teach them the gospel of Jesus. But we are using uh, this kind of seminars, you know, to go into, uh, to attract them, you know. Uh, so uh, also we have been able to grow uh, 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 vegetables, Amen. Uh, on this property, and we distribute those vegetables uh, uh, to the elderly shelter and other people that uh, have a need. Uh, something that we want to highlight about Revive Center is that it serves as a lodging for our humanitarian missions teams. Amen. So yes, uh, uh, it's safe to go to Colombia, and probably eventually uh, we can uh, come up with a team. Uh, amen. Um, so it, it, it that uh, serves as lodging for our community uh, mission teams that come to visit Colombia. We have already have our first uh, uh, team come through uh, this year. Amen. Every team that visit uh, Colombia uh, returns home uh, with a great burden for the lost in their own community. Amen. Uh, it's definitely a life-changing experience. It is a safe place to visit and our Christian communities and, and elderly, elderly shelter uh, residents, they love when we bring visitors. Um, I mean, if there is anyone who would like to uh, come and visit uh, with your family as a vacation, I mean, we can help you put a package together, amen, uh, for you. Um, uh, and, and, and we will be your, your, uh, your guide, your tour guide. Amen. We cannot uh, close uh, this presentation uh, without asking you to please uh, pray for us. Continue praying for us. Please. Amen. Pre please. Amen. Uh, sometimes, you know, think about us. Amen. And, and, and ask God, please bless them, Lord God. Uh, whenever, wherever they are. Whatever they are going through, bless them, Lord Jesus. Plead the name of Jesus on our lives. Amen. You can follow us on, on Facebook and Instagram. You can Amen. purchase our coffee online. We have a website. Amen. Amen. I just want to tell you this. I feel um, impulsed to tell you that, you know, you can never give God and his work more than he's going to give you. Amen. And you can't think about that. And I want to tell you this testimony in like two minutes. You know, when Henry and I started this, we didn't have any support. We were throwing in every dime that we had. He was going on these trips, and we didn't have any support to do this at all. To the point, we wanted to be there so badly, but we knew we had to come back to work because all of the money that we raise goes into the missions work. It doesn't support us personally. It goes there. So we always had to be back in the States to work to the point that we began to clean houses because it was flexible work. And we could do other work, but we knew that that would hold us. So we did whatever we can. Well, God provided. At first, we were, we were uncomfortable with that. <laughs> but we did it because we knew why we were doing it. And let me tell you, through that, one of the houses that we cleaned, this woman is a very wealthy business owner. And through her, without her knowing our life, she has no idea about us, only what we do in Colombia. This woman, through her, has provided us with 
Not one brand new car, two brand new cars. She's helped my children grow through private school and high school and on in college has supported them. She paid for our oldest son's wedding. I mean, this, we're not talking little, we're talking a lot. And I give you that testimony because let me tell you, don't question God when it comes to giving because you can't outgive him. And I'm just giving that to you as a testimony because we've lived that life the last couple years. We don't even know how it happens, but God provides. That's the God that we serve. Amen. Yeah, we were driving a Volvo with over 300,000 miles on it. And um, this lady, she gave us an offering or a donation. And she said, this is for you. And we told her, well, this is right on time because our car is about to, uh, to die, you know. And uh, this is, I mean, this, what a blessing. And she said, what? Do you need a car? I didn't know that. That money is for you. I want you to go to this Honda dealer and talk to my guy, Tony, there. Tell them, I, I'm going to call him. Just go there. And I want you to choose a car from that parking lot. We went to the dealer. And, of course, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're walking through the used car, you know. I mean, nice used cars on a Honda dealer over there. And Tony came out and said, you, you must be Henry and Jennifer. I said, yes. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, uh, I, assistant so-and-so told me, you know, to. And she said, yeah, but why in the used car lot? She said that you need a new car. I said, well, I didn't know that. You know, you should have told me that sooner. <laughs> I didn't say that. but And I was having so much trouble and problem telling this guy, this is the car I want. I said, hey, just, he told me, he said, what car do you want? I said, listen, she gave you instructions, do whatever she said, like <laughs> Jesus, you know, <laughs> like Mary, you know, <laughs> do as he said. I said, whatever she told you. And he said, Henry, I, I, I know what you, she, she said that you transport boxes and stuff because you bring things to Colombia so you need an SUV and she and he he brought up this beautiful Honda passport and uh, and it is it, and he said don't worry and he showed me a check he said she signed the check and she said just put the numbers I was like hama 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 <laughs> and then Jennifer called her crying and thank you, thank you so much. And, and she said, well, Jennifer, you know, I'm on, on vacation right now. When I get back next week, I want Henry to go back and select his because that's yours. <laughs> Well, anyway, I made a mistake to take Mark with me, you know, and uh, I end up with a red car, you know. <laughs> a, red yeah, a red Honda, you know, but, but hey, anyway. And God is, I mean, when you serve him for his glory, and when you work to bless people, to benefit people, those two things, for his glory, and for others, he will open the windows of heaven and he will. Amen. You know, in Colombia, we have to ride buses and cars, rent cars and everything because we didn't have a car in Colombia. And, uh, well, we were hoping to get a car in Colombia to, to transport ourselves. And I told a lady in Colombia that I was looking for a car, you know. I said, I don't have money, but I'm looking for a car. And she called me and she said, hey, there is a car that they're selling. Go to that dealer and see what you think about that car. I went to the dealer and it was a Nissan. And, 
And I call and say, well, the car is nice, but I cannot, we cannot afford the car. But I'll keep looking. A couple of days later, that lady with her mom came into Revive Center with a car. And I saw her, and uh, I, I congratulate her. I said, oh, I noticed, I, I saw that you bought the car for you. It's a nice car. And she said, yes, I bought the car. But she took the keys, and she gave it to me. Mm -hmm. She said, it's yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I begin to cry every time when I think of the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> And, and I will never forget what she said, Pastor Bobby. She told me, I know the work you do for God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know the work you do for God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand up, please, for a moment and... Uh, I won't take uh, much time to, to give you a word from the Lord. I, I feel in my heart that somebody needs to hear this word. I promise you I won't uh, take long. Amen. Um, even though I'm going to do it in Spanish. And, and Jennifer is going to translate for me. Amen. Praise God. Um, Will you please bow your heads and uh, and ask God to to bless us and anoint our lips to talk to your heart, Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, um, bless us now with this word. Help me and help us deliver this word, Lord God, accordingly to your purpose in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name you may be seated amen amen go ahead I want you to listen to that scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 through 7 go ahead and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, mm -hmm. among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. All right. Stop right there. Paul is describing certain condition. Pablo estaba describiendo una condición. Amen. Go ahead. But God, who is rich in mercy. But God, pero Dios. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, yeah. even when we were dead yeah. in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Quiero hablarles por unos momentos I want to speak to you for a few minutes acerca de la conjunción bíblica. about the biblical conjunction. Amen. La conjunción bíblica. The, a biblical conjunction. Pero antes, but before that, quiero decir algunas cosas acerca de nuestro Dios. I want to say a couple things about our God. En primer lugar, First place. Él es inmutable. He is immutable. Él no cambia. He does not change. Él es todo poderoso. He's all powerful. Keep that in mind. 
Él es omnisciente. He's all knowing. Él conoce todas las cosas. He's all knowing. Él está presente en todas partes. He is everywhere present. Él es eterno. And he is eternal. Él es santo. He is holy. Él es justo. He is righteous. Él es amoroso. He's a loving God. Él es verdadero. He's truthful. Él es todo sabio. And he is all wise. Nunca olvide eso. Never forget that. Nunca olvide quién es Dios. Never forget who God is. El apóstol Pablo le recordó a Timoteo. Apostle Paul reminded Timothy. De que Dios. Saying that God. Dios. That God. Él es el rey de los siglos. Is the king eternal. Él es inmortal. Immortal. Él es invisible. Invisible. Él es el único. The only. Y sabio Dios. Wise God. Aleluya. 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 Algunas veces tenemos que recordarnos lo que es Dios. We need to remind ourselves who God is. Aleluya. Aleluya. Especial en, especialmente en estos tiempos especially in the days that we're living in tenemos que recordarnos we must remind ourselves que Él es el Rey de los siglos that He is the King eternal que Él es el Rey de los siglos He is the King eternal los hombres vienen y van men come and go gobiernos vienen y van governments come and go pero mi Dios but our God Él es el Rey de los He is king eternal. Él es rey hoy. He is the king today. Y él será rey mañana. And will be the king tomorrow. Y él fue rey ayer. And he was yesterday's king as well. Hallelujah. Dios existe por sí mismo. Amen. He is solitary in his existence. Hallelujah. Todos nosotros necesitamos la ayuda de algo para existir. Every one of us needs help from something to exist. Pero Dios existe por sí mismo. But he is solitary in his existence. Él es asombroso. He is awesome. Él es irrefutable Amen. en sus decretos. He is refutable in his decrees. Él es perfecto sin error. He is flawless. Hallelujah. Él es perfecto en su conocimiento. He is flawless in his foreknowledge. Él es Feroz en su ira. He's fierce in his wrath. Él es supremo en su estado. He is supreme in his state. Él tiene el grado más alto. He is sovereign in his authority. Él no tiene quien lo supere. He, there is no one that can go beyond him. Él es soberano en su autoridad. Amen. He is sovereign in authority. Aleluya. O sea, él gobierna por sí mismo. He self governs. Hallelujah. Él no tiene que someterse a nadie. He does not have to submit to anyone else. Él no tiene que darle cuenta a nadie. He doesn't have to give an account to anyone. Él no cambia. He is unchangeable. Él es ilimitado en su poder. He's unlimited in his power. Escúcheme bien. Listen. Él, él es inamovible en su fidelidad. He is unshakable in his faithfulness. Él es inamovible en su paciencia. He is unmovable from his patience. Si no fuera por su paciencia. If it wasn't for his patience. Si no fuera por su paciencia. If it wasn't for his patience. Hallelujah. Él es impecable en su bondad. He's flawless in his goodness. Él es asombroso en su gracia. He's awesome and amazing in Él his grace. En su his mercy is eternal. Él es en su amor. His love is infinite. Infinite. Él es digno de la gloria y la alabanza. He is worthy of all glory Él and es praise. Digno de la gloria y la alabanza. He is worthy of glory and praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
si usted no siente alabarlo ahora. If you don't feel like worshiping him right now. Hay algo mal con su entendimiento. Then maybe you just don't understand enough. Ah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Por eso es que cuando pienso en las bondades de él. That's why when I think about the goodness of him. Y todo lo que él ha hecho por mí. And everything that he has done for me. Ah, aleluya. Aleluya. Nunca olvide lo que él es. Never forget who he is. Aleluya. Oh, aleluya. Aleluya. Ahora déjeme hablar acerca de la conjunción bíblica. Now let me talk to you about this biblical conjunction. Pero Dios. But God. La palabra pero. This word but. Es una conjunción. It's a conjunction. Es una preposición. It's a preposition. Es un adverbio. And it's an adverb. Y en el griego, como fue escrito el Nuevo Testamento. And in the Greek, as the New Testament was written in Greek. La palabra pero. That word but. Se traduce de la palabra de. Is translated from the word de. Y de es una de las partículas griegas más utilizadas. And de is one of the Greek particles that is mostly used. Escúcheme. Listen. Para conectar una cláusula. To connect one clause. Con otra. With another. En una frase. In a phrase or sentence. Cuando, cuando hay un contraste entre las dos cosas. When there is a contrast between each clause in the sentence. Esa conjunción sirve. That conjunction is used para unir dos cosas to join two things que están opuestas that are opposing one another. Cuando hay un contraste claro entre dos cosas when there is a clear contrast between two things se usa esa conjunción bíblica You can find this conjunction this in the Bible. Y yo puedo decir, And I can say, es una conjunción crítica. I can call it a critical conjunction. El apóstol Pablo usó esa conjunción. Apostle Paul used that conjunction. Para conectar dos partes que estaban en contraste. To connect two things that were contrasting. El apóstol Pablo está diciendo. Apostle Paul was saying. Cómo nos encontrábamos. How we were. How we found ourselves before. Ustedes estaban muertos. You were dead. Olían mal. You smelled bad. Estaban sin vida. You had no life in you. Iban hacia el infierno. You were on your way to hell. Pero Dios. But God. Pero Dios. But God. Pero Dios. But God. Que es rico en misericordia. Who is rich in mercy. Ustedes estaban sucios. You were filthy. Ustedes estaban sucios. You were filthy. Pero Dios. But God. Ustedes no eran nada. You were nothing. Pero Dios. But God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Pero Dios. But God. <laughs> Aleluya. Ustedes iban para abajo. You were on your way way down. Pero Dios. But God. Aleluya. 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 Estabas perdido. You were lost. Pero Dios. But God. Estaba ciego. You were blind. Pero Dios. But God. Alaba sandaria. Aleluya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Aprenda esa conjunción. Learn that conjunction. Hallelujah. Dos palabritas pequeñas. Two small words there. Pero Dios. But God. Cuando el diablo te diga algo. When the devil comes talking to you. Aprende a decir. You better learn to say. Pero Dios. Oh, but God. Cuando el doctor te diga algo. When doctor says something. Pero Dios. You say, oh, but God. Cuando la economía diga algo. Cuando la economía When your economy says something Dile, pero Dios You say, oh, but God Pero Dios But God Cuando tú mismo te digas algo Even when you are saying stuff to yourself Hallelujah, aunque no tengas fuerzas And you say, I don't have any strength left Dilo But Dilo Say it Pero Dios Say it, but Pero Dios God. Pero Dios <laughs> That's really the whole message, but I'm going to say something else. <laughs> Why do you come to church? I'm sure you come because you want to learn about God, right? Pero para aprender de Dios. But in order to learn about God, tenemos que desaprender algunas cosas inexactas. First you have to unlearn some things that you've learned about God. Porque a nosotros se nos enseñaron algunas cosas inexactas Be de Dios. Because a lot of us have been taught some things about God that just weren't right. A mí me enseñaron que Dios es un amo cruel de mi destino. I was taught that 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 God was like a, a cruel master. master of my destiny. Que Dios es rígido. That God is rigid. Que Dios es vengativo. And that God is vindictive. Que él es duro. And that he's harsh. Que él está fuera de mi alcance. That he's out of my reach. Que él no se interesa por lo que me pasa. That he really is not interested about what's going on in my life. Que las cosas malas que me pasan. That the bad things that happen to me. Vienen de él. Are from him. Pero mi querido amigo. But my dear friend. El verdadero Dios de la Biblia. The true God of the Bible. No es ninguna de esas cosas. He's none of those things. Pero Dios. But God. <laughs> Pero Dios. But God. Porque cada vez que yo me enfrento a unas circunstancias que me abruman. Because every time I face a circumstance that wants to overwhelm me. Cada vez que me enfrento a circunstancias que me quieren agobiar. Every time I face a situation that just wants to overwhelm me. Que me quieren destruir. And wants to destroy me. Yo he entendido. I have understood. 
y he experimentado and I've even experienced que that, hay una presencia that there is a presence al lado mío it's near me alrededor de mí it surrounds me dentro de mí and it's in me que está en contra de todo aquello que me quiere destruir and it is contrary to all of that that wants to destroy me y cada vez que me siento atacado and every time I feel attacked Hallelujah! Cada vez que me siento perseguido, every time I feel persecuted, esa presencia está allí. That presence is there para defenderme, to defend me, para protegerme, to protect me, aún más, more even more. Hallelujah! Aún más, more so. Cada vez que he fallado. Every time I fail, esa presencia estado ahí. That presence is there. Para levantarme. To lift me. Para up, animarme. To encourage para me. Para motivarme. To motivate me. Para animarme a seguir adelante. To encourage me to keep going forward. Esa presencia es todopoderosa. Amen. That is the almighty presence. Esa presencia God. es siempre victoriosa. It's a victorious presence. Esa presencia jamás puede ser derrotada. That presence can never be defeated. Amen. Por eso es que en medio de la prueba y en medio de la lucha, that's why in the midst of trials and tribulations, mi copa está rebosando. My cup is overflowing. Oh, hallelujah. Por eso es que en medio de la necesidad, that even in the midst of great need, hay algo dentro de mí, there's something that's in me, que me da la aseguranza, that gives me that blessed assurance, de que todo va a estar bien. That is going to be all right. Todo va a estar bien. Everything is going to be all right. De que de alguna manera, one way or another, Dios va a proveer. God will provide. Él va a abrir un camino. He will open the path. Él va a abrir una puerta donde no hay una puerta. He will open a door where there is no door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet, please. Yo creo que usted puede saber. Muchos ejemplos en la Biblia de esa conjunción bíblica. You can see many examples of this biblical conjunction in the Bible. José es uno de ellos. Joseph, he's one. Sus hermanos lo vendieron. His brothers sold him. Lo traicionaron. He was betrayed by his own brothers. Y tiempo después cuando él se encontró otra vez con ellos. And years later when he saw his brothers again. Él les dijo. He said to them. No se preocupen. Don't, don't even worry about it. Ustedes pensaron hacerme mal. You thought to do me harm. Pero Dios. But God. Ustedes me quisieron matar. You thought to kill me. Pero Dios. But God. Pero Dios. But God. Y el gobernador en ese tiempo. And the governor of that time. Lo echó en la cárcel. Threw him into jail. Pero la Biblia dice algo. The Bible says. Pero Dios estaba con José. But God was with Joseph. Por eso digo que es crítico. That's why I say it's critical. Me podrán echar a la cárcel. You can be thrown into jail. Con tal que él esté conmigo. It's okay as long as God is with me. 
Porque él es quien hará la diferencia. Because he's the one that will make the difference. Salmo 73, 36 dice. Psalm 73, 26 says. Mi carne y mi corazón desfallecen. My flesh and my heart failed me. Mas la roca de mi corazón y mi porción es Dios. But the rock of my heart and my portion was God forevermore. que muchos se, se sienten o nos sentimos de esa manera en estos días I know many of us feel this way. tanta incertidumbre There's so much uncertainty. tanta confusión so much confusion. tanto pánico so much panic. nuestra carne y nuestro corazón a veces sienten de fallecer our flesh and our heart feels like it wants to fail us. pero Dios But God. Pero Dios. But God. Es mi porción. He is my portion. Él es mi roca. He is my rock. El mundo se podrá estar desbaratando. This world can be falling apart. Pero Dios. But God. Es mi roca. God is my rock. I want to pray for someone here today. Espíritu Santo, esta mañana me me pidió hacer algo. The Holy Spirit this morning asked me to do something. Que quiero que, o lo que él quiere que tú hagas. And what he would like you to do. Desde que tú menciones el problema. He wants you to mention the problem. Que te está atormentando. That's tormenting you right now. La confusión. Whatever that confusion is that's affecting you. Que te está agobiando. That's overwhelming you. Y le digas. And say. Pero Dios. To that problem, but God. Si estás confundido o confundida. If you are confused about something. No tengas temor en decir. Do not be afraid to say. Estoy confundida. I'm confused. Pero Dios. But God. Traerá luz a la situación. Will bring light into the situation. Estoy atemorizada o atemorizado. I'm fearful. Pero Dios. But God. Estoy enfermo. I'm sick. Pero Dios. But God. Estoy pasando por una difícil situación económica. I'm going through a financial hardship. Pero Dios. But God. Mi relación no está bien. My relationships are not going well. Pero Dios. But God. Levanta tus manos ahí donde estás. I invite you to raise your hands. Lift your hands. Ahora mismo. Right now. Cierra tus ojos. Just close your eyes for a minute. Padre. Yo sé lo que tú eres. Father, I know who you are. Y yo sé lo que tú puedes hacer. I know what you can do. Creo en ti, Señor. 
Lord, and I believe in you. Y espero en ti, Señor. And I wait on you. Gracias por tu palabra. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Es mi oración, Señor. And it is my prayer today, God. Que este pueblo crea tu palabra. That this people would believe in your word today. Que crea lo que tú eres verdaderamente. That, that they would believe in who you really are. Ha. En el nombre del Señor. In the name of Jesus. Aleluya. 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 Pasa un momento en la presencia de Dios. Just spend a little time in God's presence. Pastor Bobby, I'm, les, les, le voy a entregar este micrófono. Pastor Bob, I'm going to give you the microphone. Amen. Hallelujah. Pero iglesia, pasa un momento más en la presencia de Dios. But I ask you please just to spend a, a few en more minutes in God's Señor presence. Jesucristo. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Aleluya, aleluya. Gracias al predicador para las palabras de Dios. Las palabras tienen mucho poder. Pero Dios. But God. Thank the preacher today for the word of God. Words have much power. But God, Jesus, you have no idea how encouraging this word of God is to me. They have given their testimony, and as you come, I want you to come, because God has something for somebody. I want you to come on down to this altar, and whatever it is that God has for you, if you don't come, you won't get it. Sometimes you have to step out by faith. You have to step out on your faith for God to be able to give you what you need. But they've shown that when they decided to do something for God, that when they stepped out on faith, just simply walked. No money, just, just go to look. Don't know if you're ever going to have any deliverance or any hope of provision but you just go that's stepping out on faith and when you step out on faith and we've seen it over the last few weeks when people said I need the Holy Ghost and they stepped out on faith and they were willing to fight for what was theirs but God who God who God who is rich You know, one of the things that I hate is when Christians preach a doctrine of bondage. I hate that with all my heart. Because while God expects some things from us, he's a merciful God. And some of us should have been killed. He should have taken us out, but look at us. We are here today. And he is saying, I'm giving you one more chance. One more chance. But God, who is rich in mercy. And he's saying, I need to give you what you need today. Would you come? Some may need healing in your body, but the Lord wants to see if you'll step out. I said this last week and the week before that there are people that God has healed, but because you have refused to give your testimony, you have limited your blessings. There are those that God wants to heal, but he's saying, you have never testified of me. And you're always ashamed to step out. But unless you step out, I will not grant you what you have desired. It is time for the people of God to take that step. And to say, God, I'm willing. I'm here. You know, I knew that they would give an awesome testimony in the word of God today. But as you're listening to me, as you're praying, I want you to hear me well. I want you to hear me well. The Lord is saying that you have limited my ability to help you. 
by being reserved. You have limited my ability to provide for you because you have maintained your distance from me and from my work. And he's saying that you need to take that step of faith. Push beyond your shyness. Push beyond your reservations and step closer to me. And this is not just for today. He's saying you've got to do this because the time has been far spent. Far spent. Satan has desired to destroy some of you. But the Holy Ghost is preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the preacher and telling you that you can trust him. But God, but God, but God. Hallelujah. I feel something. I feel deliverance here. I really do. I feel deliverance. Some of you are wondering, can you walk away from this altar delivered? Can you walk away from this altar with the blessing that I desire in my life? And I'm telling you, yes, you can. Some of you, you've prayed for your children. Some of you, you've prayed for your, your parents and you've prayed for your loved ones and you're wondering, God, is there any hope? There is hope because you're standing in the gap for them. Come on, somebody. You know how we do it here at New Life. If you want something from God, you got to push through. You've got to fight for it. Fight for your children. Fight for your spouse. Every day when you get up, go into prayer. Go into prayer and you believe what God says he's going to do in your life. Listen. He's going to make a way right now for you. He's making a way right now for you. Jesus, Jesus, thank you so much. Pastor Henry Chokonta for the message. Sister Jennifer for the message. Thank you for your testimonies and thank you for sharing what you did. Hallelujah. Come on. I know somebody needs their deliverance, their breakthrough right now. Amen. But you got to pray through to break through. You've got to get to that place in your heart and your mind where you say, God, I'm praying through to break through right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody needs to take dominion at this time and say, God, in the name of Jesus. Get a little excited in your, in your emotions and say, God, I take back what the devil stole from me. I take it back. Hallelujah. I've been telling you for two weeks, tell that devil, get your hands off my life. Get your, get your voice out of my head. I'm God's. I belong to him. Holy Ghost, would you move in this place? Holy Ghost, would you move in this place? God, there's a spirit of deliverance. Come on. Come on. Your healing is yours right now. In the name of Jesus, deliverance is yours right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God is doing something. God is doing something right now. Come on. The Holy Ghost is here. The Lord has dispatched angels to walk around and to anoint people right now. Come on. Come on. Receive what God has for you. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Is your back against the wall? Is that mountain too high for you? Can you say, God, I'm taking that step forward? Can you say, God, mine, it's mine, my deliverance is mine. The Holy Ghost is mine. Pour your spirit out upon me, God, another time. Pour your spirit out into me one more time, Jesus. Lord, I want you to move this mountain in my life right now. Yes. Lord, I want you to move mountains right now. Move mountains right now, Lord, move mountains right now. Move mountains right now, God. Move mountains right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. You cause war with your power. You perform miracles. Come on, he performs miracles. He's doing it now. There is nothing that's impossible. That is impossible. And we're standing here only because you're standing here. 
And it looked as if it, it was, no over. was over. Lord, you, you made, made a way. way. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because you made. Oh, you. You made, made a, way. a way. Lord, you made a way for me. You made a you Somebody ought to get beside yourself right now. Say, God, you made a way for me. Somebody oh, made a step a to the side. I'm about to dance. I'm about to rejoice. I'm oh, about to run. I'm about to glorify God. You made a way. Don't you know how. I don't know how. Lord, I don't know don't how you know did how. But you made a way. You see, sometimes don't you don't know even know how God is about to do it. But he's don't working know on your how, behalf. But you did it. Yes. Don't know how, but you did Jesus. it. Don't know Holy how, Ghost but in this you did place it. Right now, God. And I don't Stretch know your why. power, God. You begin to touch minds and hearts and spirits. Mighty God, bring deliverance, why. God. Send healing upon your people, God. Lord Jesus, motivate your people for greatness, God. Motivate your people, dear God, to come out of the shadows, God. Motivate your people, God, to come out of the bondage that they're in. Motivate your children, God, to stand like you've never stood before. Lord, you're coming back. You're coming back, Lord. I want to be ready, God, when you come. Jesus. Come on, come on. You got to step out in faith. Say, God, I need you. Only because you made a way, and I'm standing here. Only because you made a way, and I'm standing here. Only because you made. See you move mountains. Is there a mountain that will not move for you right now? You don't even know who you are. If that mountain is standing in your way, you need to step to that mountain right now. Stand right up against it and say, you've got to move. And if it won't move, you touch it with your spiritual hand. You say, you've got to move. Move now. The Lord gave me authority over you. Move. Hallelujah. We're chained up. And for what reason? We're bound behind walls that's boxing us in. Why? To break. Why? Won't those chains break? break? Why not? You need to shake yourself like Samson and say, those chains cannot hold me. Giants fall. You see, giants fall. Giants fall. Giants fall. I talked to you about giants on Wednesday night. They cannot stand against you. Come on, somebody. I feel the presence of God. You move mountains, God. Tell your mountain, move right now. Say you move mountains. Tell that giant you can't step to me because God is on my side. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Ghost. Let the word of God begin to anoint you with minds and hearts right now, Holy Ghost. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Walls are falling. Strongholds. Come on, chains are breaking. Strongholds are being destroyed by the power of God right now. Come on. Yes, Lord, you've been living too long under that stronghold. It's time for you to come out. He's moving your mountain right now. Come on. Come on. Just a little longer. Just a little longer. Let's get before the Lord and say, God, I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. I'm healed. I have faith. I'm delivered. I have faith. My financial difficulties are going to be remedied. God, before I walk out of these these four walls, God is already taken care of. It's established. Relationships. Godly relationships. God is opening doors for you right now. Come on now. Come on. Peace in your mind and in your spirit. Peace in your home. Come on. God says, I'm I'm giving it to you. Take it. I'm giving it to you. Take it. Strongholds are breaking. Strongholds are breaking. Strongholds are breaking. Come on. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. 
Somebody ought to just raise your hands and say, God, mountains are moving right now. God, as I move, it's moving. God is backing up. Yes. Yes. There is power and power in the name of Jesus Christ in this moment. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on. I don't care what language you speak. Begin to speak it in faith. Speak it in faith. I want everybody to raise your hands right now. Right where you are. Right where you are. I don't know how you came in here, but you're walking out delivered. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There was a powerful word of God, and the word of God began before the preaching started. Every photo that you saw on that slide and every word that was spoken before the preacher began to preach, the word of God was already flowing. I felt the Holy Ghost right at the beginning. I already felt the Holy Ghost. And what God started in my heart three years ago before Jennifer reached out to me, I believe with all of my heart and I felt the Holy Ghost speaking to me through this whole thing right here. And I'm committing this church. I am committing this church. Every time I go to a conference, y'all don't know what I'm out there doing. I'm committing this church to a lot of things. And we're about to commit again. We're going to commit again. Now, I felt I was a partner with them before, but now it's going way beyond that. Because somewhere during this week, I will be on the phone with them because I want to talk to them about the direction that they're going in. And I want them to share with me how we can help. When you walk out these doors, and this is beside your tithes and your offerings, I'm, I want you to commit to something that you're going to give to them. Because I want them to be blessed before they leave here today. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's time to put our money where our mouth is. We talk about God and we talk about what we want from God. And we always talk about how good God is and how powerful God is. But when it's time to support an effort, then we don't know how to support. Now, I'm not asking you to go get your mortgage, second mortgage on your house or anything. I'm saying speak to God and say, God, I am going to bless them today. Y'all know I don't talk about money, right? Amen. But we are going to step this up another level. I was praying so much because when I was apostolic man director, I poured so much of my heart into what we wanted to do and for the children's orphanage that we were going to be building in South America. And I felt in my heart that we had to reach out and I, I was on the phone with pastors and I was on the phone with their men's directors and the ministers because we had to collect as much money as we possibly could because we wanted that orphanage built. It's built today. And you gave, and some of you didn't even realize it, and when the people who pledged didn't give their pledges, you know what we did? We paid the pledges anyway. We're supporting missionaries all across the globe right now that people pledged to but they're no longer here. You think we just said because these people are no longer here to pay their pledge that we're not going to pay the pledges? We pay those pledges every single month. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But we're going to step it up. Man, we're going to step it up. I don't know what the needs will be, but we're going to be there. We're going to be there. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God has blessed this church in ways that some of you have no clue. You'd have to talk to a board member and probably not all the board members because some of them don't even know really because some of the things we don't even talk about. There were times when Sister Maria would come to me and say to me, this is all that came in today. I remember the first time I looked at her and I said, don't ever bring that to me again. Don't do it. Didn't I tell you that? I said, I, that's not my business. I don't care what came in. I know this because God has, man, don't let me start with my testimonies. God has always done for his church when we do what's right. And I knew we were doing what was right. And so we're going to bless them today with the offering. Now, I don't know what's going to come in. I already know what God put in my heart that y'all are getting today. 
Because when you give your money, we make sure that we're going to help those who are helping others. Amen? And I'm not speaking from emotions. Some people get all emotional and they start making pledges and doing stupid things. No, no, no. I'm very grounded right now because I've been praying for this for years. And I wasn't sure how we were going to partner or, or, or when, but instead of just giving, we're going to be your partners. We're going to be your partners. How many are with me? Amen. All in favor, say aye. aye. Those who are not in favor, we're not going to hate you, but say aye as well. See, they shy, they scared. Are you scared to say you're not with us? All that's in favor of this and you want me to make the decision as to how we're going to help them, say aye. Oh, I love this. You know y'all just voted, right? So y'all don't even know what I'm going to be doing, but y'all said yes, go ahead. So I'm going ahead. I want you to stand because God is about to bless somebody. I don't know who it is. Somebody's about to do something. You know, I, I never say, uh, let's get the $50 line and the $300 line. And the, I don't, I really don't believe in none of that. I don't believe in any of that. I'm not saying God will never ha ever have me say that because if whatever he wants, but I've just never been that person. Whatever it is, as you walk out that door and you give, God is going to give it back to you a thousandfold. A thousandfold. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. As you give, God will begin to heal your body. As you give, God will begin to open doors for you. They didn't have to show anything today. I've been following them on Facebook for a long time. When I saw what they were doing, my heart would break every single time. And I'm thinking, man, we got to get them. So when they said they were on their way, I, I was excited. I said, come on over. Raise your hands. Say, mighty God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. And Lord, as we leave this place today, I pray for each and every person. Anoint them anoint them for the work that is ahead and that is also at hand and bless them God as they go in all their endeavors and every opportunity they get to bless the kingdom God to feed the poor to Lord God provide housing God even if we're helping someone else through their ministry to do it I pray that you would bring a blessing upon every individual in this church they may have to give they may not have to give but you know their heart and in the name of Jesus, as we walk out these doors, we ask you to bless them. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Do you receive it? It's yours. Brother Mc... We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history.